you're going to have your Pavo 20 Pro in this particular instance on the desk and you are going to first of all make sure you've got a GPS. Now this is the Flyfish M10 now. There's a few reasons why we're using this today. I know a lot of you guys don't have a 3D printer and this comes with a 3D printed accessory already. It's also lovely and small but it's also one of the ones I use the most and find it the most effective. So that's what we're going to do. We'll move it over here for a second and then we're going to have to take apart the Pavo 20 Pro in order to access the flight controller because you can't get to it from the bottom. Now we should be able to do it without too much disassembly. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is unscrew the four screws where we installed the canopy with the 04 Pro in back when we got the drone originally. And if this is something that you want to do, it may well be advisable to do it before you install the camera. It's just not going to make a massive difference, don't get me wrong, but it just... Uh, rather than putting it all together and then... gymnastics with a screwdriver <clears throat> it will just make more sense so there's our canopy we've unplugged it and we're just going to pop it to one side that you can just access the flight controller from there but we'll take these screws off and hopefully it won't be too much of a pain to do but this is why I implore beta FPV to install them not going to be the most difficult job in the world but it's just a step that I think would add such a quality of life to this drone if they offered it even at an extra unplug your LED strip and there we go and then we've got access to the flight controller here and it's just a case of selecting where we want to solder to first of all so let me have a look got T1, R1, ground and 5 volt and I'm just going to solder this GPS in. For you guys that don't know, you're going to solder your R pad, so on the back of your GPS unit you've got a, an R pad, a T pad, a voltage and a ground. Your voltage goes to your voltage, your ground goes to your ground, your T goes to your RX and your RX goes to your T. We'll make a bit more sense of that as we go through this process. But first of all, we're going to just pre-tin these pads. I'm just going to move this microphone out of the way. So now again what we're going to do is we're going to plug it back into Betaflight and we're just going to check and make sure and get it all set up. So once we're in Betaflight we know that we've connected it to UART number one. So we're going to go UART number one and we're going to go GPS and leave that as auto. That will then work out <coughs> excuse me, what it needs to be, which I particularly know because I use it all the time is that, but that's how you would do it in the first place. Then we're going to go down to GPS and we are going to select Galileo and we are going to save and reboot. So once you've changed all those settings in the GPS and in the ports tab you'll see up here you've got a GPS signal that's now gone red and if we go back into the GPS ports tab you'll see that it is slowly picking up satellites. Now it's never going to get a log, a lock, sorry, because of the room that I'm currently sat in, but we can see that it is actually finding and uh, and catching those satellites. So we are getting close to it being uh, being locked on. But what that means ultimately, sorry for rambling on, is that we are at the stage now where we have done everything we need to do and it's working as it should be working. So what we need to do now is put it all back together. Once we put it all back together, find a place for it to go that's as far away from interference as possible. And then what we can do is get out into the field and uh, get it tested. The canopy is gonna go here. So we've just made sure that this has moved over a little bit. That should just about sit back on that screw without inducing any jello. We've cable tied it around here and then we've put the wire over and under 
the motor and up to there. So it should be far enough away without causing too much or hopefully any interference. Now, because we've moved things around and we've tightened things up, what we're going to do is just very quickly, and I won't necessarily put this on the screen, but I'm just going to very quickly suggest that you do your due diligence and just go back into beta flight and just make sure that everything is still working as it was because you can pull wires off and you can yeah so i've still got my gps signal and i've still got gps satellites being received there's still things we need to do in beta flight and that's fine we can do that later but let's just get this thing physically back together before we do anything else now desk is an absolute mess I do have copper tape and I was thinking about using copper tape to try and avoid as much interference as possible but then I figured not necessarily everybody is going to have that copper tape so I thought let's go with I can't remember where this goes I think this goes to the back but then I, I realized not everybody's going to have copper tape are they So we'll go with insulation tape initially, just to, uh, well, install it really, um, and see if we get away without too much interference. Hopefully we will. If we need to add copper tape, then we're going to need to add copper tape. But I think, looking at where we are, I think we might be okay, you know, guys. Just make sure that the cable for your LEDs has gone through as well. I'm just going to try not to catch it here. ceramic antenna, or the copper antenna, sorry, for the ELRS. I'll just put through here. This is still such an amazingly popular drone because if you get a good one, and I, I, I sort of say that deliberately but if you get a good one and you don't have any problems with it then these are absolutely phenomenal drones but I also appreciate people have had lemons which is sort of why we started doing our QC checks to spot any obvious problems not necessarily with this but with all manufacturers because there is or there has been problems with manufacturers but I must say as we get through certainly 2025 and as we get through more and more manufacturers I think the quality of, of parts is, is increasing quite a lot it, it did used to be quite a big sort of quality issue there were certain companies who if you got an early version of their stuff was brilliant but if you got a later version you risked getting a lemon. But that does seem to have been resolved. Go into your failsafe tab and you're going to want to enable GPS rescue. Now a lot of these will work as standard but you are going to need to double check it before you rely on it. Set your minimum satellites to 8 and then in my opinion I would advise use uh, arming without fix but bear in mind if you only get seven satellites you don't have a little bit of gps rescue you have none so if you enable arming without a fix and you've only got seven satellites or one less than whatever is your minimum it means that if you lose signal or enable gps rescue you have no gps rescue it will just disarm and fall to the floor or the bottom of the ocean depending what you're flying over at the time We've enabled GPS Rescue. What we also need to do now is just go into our Modes tab and add GPS Rescue onto a switch. So hit Add Range. GPS Rescue, 
Okay, so that's all our work done now in Betaflight. That is everything done. And in our GPS, we can see it's still picking up satellites. And we can see over here, we have a GPS in red, which means it's working, but it hasn't got a fix. The next day. And this is another day because I took the Pavo 20 out to do the speed test and I'd forgot to do something. And that is in our OSD tab, I'd forgot to add our GPS elements. So with that in mind, we need GPS speed, we need GPS satellites, we need home direction, we need home distance, we need flight distance, uh, and we will add the latitude and longitude as well. You have no idea how frustrating it is with these beta FPV quads to go out and to try and get something done only to realize I need to just change something really simple, really rudimental. I can do it on the app without any problems whatsoever, but because they use these cables that have adapters as opposed to just a cable, it, um, it meant that I couldn't do it. So uh, there we go. Change it to miles per hour, and that's it. It's as simple as that. It's literally a two second change, but because I didn't have the adapter board with me yesterday, I wasn't able to do it. So let's cut to a new day and we'll try again. Let's go. Nice, we have to go whilst okay, we have it. So we're going to do a speed test of the Beta FPV Pavo 20 Pro. Now we've installed our LEDs. Problem is, you don't have your stick cam on, so you're just going to have to use the phone oh, yeah, audio. That's a good point. I can put yeah. <laughs> you ready, boy? I'm going to do a fast pass right past the front of you. Ready? Yep. Oh, holy! Oh, now stay there because I'm going to come past. You're going to have to use the phone audio for this. 50 miles per hour. Wow. <laughs> I can barely keep on camera. That's how fast that thing is. Oh, I got that on camera. For for the whole thing. An hour, and then are you ready? Yep. I tried as best as I could to not get the car in view. Oh, I'm, I'm pointing up at the sky so I can't get the car in view. Right, I'm going to come towards you and then uh, go away. So I keep filming, you ready? Yep. Go for it. Tell me if there's any cars in I'm in my stance. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh, careful, you nearly hit my bush! You nearly hit my bush! The bush, right. <laughs> babushka! Babushka! Again from last video, working yeah. with Babushka. Ready? Speeding with Babushka, I'm gonna come past you again. Yep. Oh, that's even faster! 51 miles an hour. I knew it was fast, but my hands are dying of frost, bro. Oh, I, I think I've got yeah, something yeah. like... <laughs> Holy! Um, get the landing. Remember, this is how we land people. <laughs> YouTube and I have had a chat, and we believe that this is the video that you'll like the most. So watch it, and let me know if they're right. 